scientific breakthroughs, the unveilings, the spiritual revelations, the openings. That's fine. Mm. Hijacking the mind. What? Aluminum bonds with intelligence. Rewind the message. Merry Christmas. Oh, 13 oh, oh. indigenous immigrants. State of the unison. Addressing nothing. Foundations can ruin. Level to level. Fuck the embezzlement. Tales from the crib. Hitting blood rituals. 50 scores flying over California. On a vacation. Flying dragons. Swords and daggers. Lions and tigers. Gotta get my parents or parish into raw flesh, vampire, vegetarian, I'm a malnutrition, chemically imbalanced, Ethiopian, in Helen Kush, blue projects get pushed, mold with the bush, standing on the middle line, no defining, swirling dervish, in between space and time, just a fix Tuesday, another news day, north, east, west, south, west, not here to confuse the day, just to fuse the way, uh, another tip and fix Tuesday, Whether you suffer from pain in your back to aches in your knees, come on down and purchase you some ancestral tea to get rid of all the parasites, toxins, and fleas. Spiritual elevation for cosmic gravitation. So put away the patience, because there's no time to be wasted. Now take a step into this ditch that you dug. Can you dig? We're a dose. 
Most no longer cares for mistakes, just consequence and hesitance. Cause since the lens that's been sold by foes and friends, love for teachers, preachers, kin. Like pitching in the wind if you don't start over again and change your thinking. This lesson is about your perception. Your mind is the ultimate weapon. False reality is the ultimate deception. One, two, mic check it, we break it in a given second. I live outside the box where my system knocks. Something abstract, let my mind think before my eye blinks. Watch my dirty soul, don't let it stink. I stand naked as me. I live outside the box where my system knocks. Something abstract, let my mind think before my eye blinks. Watch my dirty soul, don't let it stink. I stand naked as me. Three in the midst of this reality. Refuse to be a casualty, so casually my mind patrols a galaxy where atoms be colliding with themselves and splitting constantly. Explosion and destruction is the birth of creativity. I'm crazy, see, maybe what you think of me. Well, I agree, it takes a little lunacy to see outside the fantasy. Imagine we remove the canopies, caps, and coverings, exposing the true piano keys and play these melodies. The people would be pissing levy penalties on enemies, and government officials would be running for the hills and plead the tyranny that you inflict with flip car and surprise. you follow me? up in the air and raise them hurriedly, ferociously, emotions be the captain soul, so let them sink, a hurt, no blur, vision 2020 peep, planet surfing, mega hurting frequencies, you feeling me, you feeling me, you feeling me, you feeling me. Frequencies, you feeling me? You feeling me? You feeling me? Peace, peace. We black at you one more again. This is Brother Jamal sitting in once again for the God, Black Water, the Meta Magician. And you are tuned into Tips and Tricks Tuesday live on. First World Order Radio, and I'm excited tonight because we got a we got a show enough born uh, born burner for y'all this evening. Um, we got some guys lined up, you know, so that um, this evening you're not gonna hear me running my mouth. The whole time I'm going to be the student this evening, and um, very excited for one, the brother who allows me to get on here in his absence when he's got things to do. Black water. Well, tonight the brother's going to be here to share in with us and drop some science on us. On his mastery And not only are we going to have black water We got Another one of the gods Brother Krishna Is going to drop some science on us On his mastery And we got a young guy That's going to kick it off And um, Talking about a talented brother Who is going to Just open up um, the discussion just talking about what he does and what we have uh, accomplished together in a short period of time. So we got a lot, a lot, a lot to lay out for you this evening. Thank you all for tuning in. First and foremost, I want to send a shout out to the God, Dr. Eileen L. Bay, his goddess, Sister Kadira L. Bay. And the whole First World Order family And uh, today's date May 9th, 2017 Like I say, this is Brother Jamal And I'm always excited And I always feel privileged To be able to express myself On a platform such as this In a time such as this Very beautiful times we're living in Where truth is being revealed you can't hide nothing no more, you know. All the scrolls are being opened up. The stone is being rolled off of the tomb. So um, it's beautiful times to be in, and it's uh, it's an honor to just um, 
be able to decipher some of this information. So we got to get into this thing. We ain't got time to tarry long this evening. Um, first, but let me say this. I always want to direct your attention to Dr. Eileen L. Bay dot com. Get over there for all of your physical and metaphysical needs. It's too much for me to try to lay it out and give a synopsis of it. I'll do it an injustice. So just go over to Dr. Eileen L. Bay dot com and just look around and get you and, and, and feast on the knowledge and information that is available for you. Also, want to make you aware, I've been telling you and telling you, it's coming, it's coming. Well, it is live now. Mastersofthecosmos.com is live. Mastersofthecosmos.com. All right? Now, this website, very briefly, is a site that is dedicated to exactly what it says, to restoring the masters to their rightful throne as masters, not of your county, not of your city, not your state, not even your nation, but masters of the whole cosmos. And that is what it's geared toward. Now, my wheelhouse is, you know, I love to deal with language, breaking down language and finding the mystery and the magic within language because, you know, we have actual uh, modalities geared towards this one is called linguistic anthropology. Well, I'm not trained in that in a university. I have ghetto training in linguistic anthropology where I go and I just, just by being hungry and studying, figure out stuff and piece it all together. Now, I want to tell you about this site real quick. It's got three tiers. You can go on there and just peruse the site for free, or you can become a member of the Inner Sanctum, which is free, and you'll get access to some study tools. Um, one, very excited about 72 wise words. You need to go and become a member of the free, at least the free part of the Inner Sanctum so you can get access to that PDF file. The 72 words that I broke down in their Hebrew, from the Hebrew and Indo-European perspective, and you're going to see magic in them words. All you got to do is take your time and just and just go through that and just look at it carefully and take your time and you'll see the magic will jump off the page at you because you're going to see stuff. You're going you're gonna to find, let's give me an example. In, in Vodun, what are the gods called? The Loa. Well, you're going to look, you're going to find that one of the Hebrew names for God is Loa. L-O-A-H. So we, you, you, when you can get inside of language and peel the covers back, you'll find that you will really be restoring the Tower of Babel because you're going to find a connecting line between our language. Then we have another tier called the Adepts where for the, for the cost of 25 cents a day, you can become a member of the site and you get access to all the video lectures that I'm going to be loading in there in-depth video lectures. There's two on there right now. It's Decoding the Matrix and Symbolism 101. And I'm going to be loading up more and more information. But I'm not going to tarry on that any longer. Just go to mastersofcosmos.com, look around, check it out. Now let's get busy. Tonight's topic, which that talking about their website is perfect segue for where we're going to go first portion of the show. But our topic tonight is magic, meditation, money, and manifestation. Magic, meditation, money, and manifestation. Because it's a very important topic for us to get into because you got all types of hell breaking loose. Um, they're squeezing down more and more on certain channels of income that people have had. You know, you see a lot of the social media pushback, Facebook with the fake news, YouTube snatching people's revenue, and people are scrambling because they got comfortable on that. So if there's any time for a person to be consulting magic, this is it. This is the time because you ain't got nothing left but magic. Magic is the only thing that's real. 
So we want to have a discussion on that tonight. And what I'm trying to do is I want to I want to find some synchronicity here. Because sometimes when people hear the word magic, they're they're thrown off or they're you know they because the first thing they think is the, from the conditioned mind standpoint they think in David Copperfield, they think in David Blaine or Chris Angel, some type of you know some sleight of hand, some Vegas show tricks, you know. But in essence, that's not what magic is. Magic simply means power. And if you notice, the root is ma. Ma, M-A. So ma, as in, in magic, would be synonymous with Mary, maritime, um, um, also your M-E's, um, your M-U's as in moo, your M-O as in more. All of these come back to the same source. We're talking about power. This may be the most powerful root in all languages is the M followed by any vowel, M A. M E M U M O that right there because that is an all encompassing uh linguistic complex right there. So from we're gonna look at it from the, the magic aspect of it though tonight. And when we talk about magic, we're talking about power. We're talking about tapping into something that you already got, your own source. You see in, in Matthew's, I can't remember the, the, the chapter and verse, but there's a story of the, um, the, 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 um, the storm breaks out on the sea and all of the seamen are going crazy and Jesus is asleep in the belly of the ship. Just like the story of Jonah is asleep in the belly of the whale. Your magic is talking about something that is, Laying dormant inside of you To just wait for you to wake it up So I want to lay that down So we have a proper context Of what we're working with tonight And when you think of it from that standpoint Then we can see how magic Can bridge Into meditation And into manifestation And there are so many other modalities That fall under the, Just those two Because you know manifestation You're talking about your ritual work you're talking about positive affirmations. When you're talking about meditation, you're talking about tapping into your mind. When you talk about money, the true root of the word money is men one. There you go, that M-E complex. Well, men is the same as what? Mental. So the word money truly means to have one's mind roused. So the true currency is your mind. You're talking about energy. That is the common thread between all of these magic, meditation, money, manifestation. You're talking about the manipulation, the control, and the harnessing of energy. So I want, that's the foundation that we're working from tonight, all right? And on that, and on that line, I want to bring in the brother who built my website. And he didn't just build this website for me. He actually built another one for my personal training business. You can check out his gymworksmobile.com. But this is uh, young brother Trey, and I just want to bring him in real quick just to tell you about what he does, what his services are, and, but, but not for it to be lost, that this still ties in with magic because all magic does is goes back to the first, Hermetic principle. The mind is all and all is mental. That is the protocol for magic. The mind is all and all is mental. That means every from the mind. So working with this brother, I have a concept that starts in my mind. I then write out, you know, I'm kind of meticulous in how I do things. I write out me a, 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 an outline. I put together a whole document and I send it over to him, he takes those words and then he has to form a mental vision in his mind and then translate that into computer code. If that ain't magic, then I don't know what is. And with no further ado, we're going to bring in Brother Trey 
with the Bill Minor Group. Trey, you there? Yes, sir. Peace, peace, my brother. Can you hear me? No doubt. I can hear you. What's good? <laughs> All right. Nothing much. Man, man, first off, I definitely want to say uh, I always appreciate the opportunity, you know what I mean, just to come in and just get the opportunity to network and build not only with a, a fellow brother such as yourself, obviously our business relationship, like we, we've had the time to actually build and be on multiple projects. So I, I have an understanding of you, but as well as with the community as well. So I definitely appreciate you, brother. No doubt, no doubt. Appreciate your work um, and your energy. I want you to... I want you to talk about what you do, but what I want to do is I want to tie it in to our topic of magic, meditation, money, and manifestation. So I don't want to be super mundane. I want you to to tell me how do you, what's your process when you're taking this information and bringing it to life? Well, brother, to, to be honest with you, uh, that's why uh, when you had actually uh, sent me a little earlier the topic of today tonight's show, like I was actually gassed, like I was it brought a smile to my face because in reality, like magic, meditation, money, and manifestation, that's literally like I'm I'm a product of that. Like even our relationship within each other and coming into contact with each other is a product of obviously I know you had your manifestation on your end. But also, of course, on my end, it's just the, the products of my manifestation. So, uh, I mean, I guess to uh, start a little bit from the beginning, uh, of course, uh, family, my name is Trey. Uh, my company, uh, where the the owners, uh, of course, myself uh, and my cousin, my first cousin, grew up with, been with me my whole life. Y'all know how that go. Come from a big family. Y'all know. But uh, my our company, the Bill Minor Group, uh, what we do is we just provide any tool and every tool necessary to help black businesses start and grow. So that's from everything in the beginning. That's with your logo to help get your branding right, uh, business plans, marketing plans, uh, your company formation, whether you, you start with your DBA, LLC, uh, C-Corp, like S Corp, of course, not only can we actually, we help to counsel you through that, but we also do file as well. Uh, of course, your, your tax ID, EIN, um, going on, of course, uh, our, our number one, <laughs> like our, our number one service, which has really been getting most of the attention. Of course, the brother, our brother mentioned earlier, uh, the web design, of course, we provide that. Um, and business consulting, just in general, we have, um, we we have a lot of not just businesses, but also um, like people who are considered quote unquote YouTube stars or, or you know come to a certain amount of celebrity or fame or notoriety. We actually take them in and help them to monetize that as well. Uh, you can actually find more about our my company and our services at uh, www.thebillminergroup.net. Again, that's www.thebillminorgroup.net, and uh, it spells it all out for you, so definitely check us out. <laughs> right on, right on. Tell me this, when you're working with a client, do you ever see um, roadblocks as far as people not being able to develop a vision of what they really want to do. Well, I mean, I think, and that's the, I guess the, the fun, one of the most fun aspects of what I do is I actually get most people that come to me. It's like, they, they sort of have like, okay, I want this. Like they know in general, like I want X, Y, and Z. And I want, I wanted to be able to do this. And when people come here or when, people do this, like, this is what I want. And what I do is I actually, I get the, like, I consider it a, a privilege, you know, to actually take that and then I actually read over it. That's why I know a lot of people read my forms and I got a million questions on them. Yeah, I'm warning you now, you know, but it's because when I actually read those forms, I actually take a minute and I'm not sure if it's the place of time, but I'm, I'm for full disclosure. 
I, I engage in a little reefer <laughs> and I read over them and I, I put myself in that <laughs> mindset. Like, <laughs> and I just be honest, you know what I'm saying? But, and I put myself in, I try to put myself in that mind state of, of what they try to create as far as the, the energy and I just paint from there. Okay. 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 Perfect segue. Perfect segue. Um, what I'm getting out of this is that the client has, whether it's shallow or deep, they have some type of initial vision, and then they, as best they can, communicate that to you. And then you take it, and then you have to internalize it, and then there's a meditative process that is the foundation of you moving forward, correct? Yes, sir, exactly. And that's why I love people who I work with like you who actually paint it out for me good because a lot of times, see, the problem isn't oftentimes that people don't really know what they want. The problem is just right getting it out to me. You know what I mean? It's like they, they have a hard time articulating it or putting it into words or, and typing it within those lines within that sheet, you know what I mean, to get the word across. So I, I just try, I really just take what I get, and that's why, I, like, again, I got to say, that's why I appreciate brothers like you, and I told you that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like you about, I think I told you, like, you, I like the way you work. I think that was the way I worded it, but I really meant it, like, literally, because it's like, you, you, you paint, you lay it out to me, you know what I mean? Like, you lay it out, and then I'm able to just go, and then I do my meditation, you know what I'm saying? And it's, it is right. what it is. You know, different people have their different ways of meditating, but I do my meditation over it. And what I try to do is, and I might be, you know what I mean, not to overshoot it, but I think of it like, you, like I think of myself like, you know, it's like actors, you getting in the role. Like, I, I try to feel that person. Like, today I've been working on a site for a queen. Uh, she's doing our yaya hair out of uh, Michigan. So it's like I'm trying to get, okay, so you, you're a beauty shop, you know what I mean, you do hair. Like, what do you want? What do people, I try to put myself, really get there and then incorporate and go from there. You know, right? I, it, it, I feel right. like I'm, you know what I mean? I'm rambling a little bit, but that's really what it, what it is. No, it is what it is. I mean, it's, uh, the creative process is not no college textbook, you know. Uh, okay, perfect, perfect. Tell the people one more time, man, your website, and we're going we're gonna to move on, bring in the, the one of the other guys going to drop because we're going to build on what you just said about this. I want to I wanna really harness in on the meditative process, and, and I want to build on that. But tell the people one more time where they can find you at. Most definitely. Of course, you can find us online at www.thebillminergroup.net, T-H-E-B-I-L-L-M-I-N-O-R-G-R-O-U-P.net. And also check us out on YouTube. We got a lot of good info, free info, obviously. It's on YouTube just for just tips to help your business start and grow. And that's uh, youtube.com slash billminergroup. Uh, hit us up. That's it, bro. Appreciate the opportunity. Right on, man. Appreciate you. Peace. Peace and power. Peace. Okay. So, all right. So now we we got the foundation. Wanted to make sure that this brother could come on here and talk about what he does because I was really excited just to see. I'm always – I'm a visual artist, so – Normally, when I'm dealing with folk, the the creativity, some well, I'm not gonna say normally. Sometimes it doesn't match uh, what I've got in my head. So I was really excited. I want y'all to go and just go and check out uh, mastersofthecosmos.com so you can see how the brother works. It's not flamboyant. It's a real clean site, but I like the point of. He got the information, and then he meditated. Mind you, of course, you know, he do what he do. I mean, hell, we ain't no no priest at no Catholic church here. So um, 
But to build on meditation, I want to bring in somebody who's a master of the of the meditative art, master of Tai Chi and multiple other modalities. And this is the brother whose show this is. So it's an honor for me to be able to, to rap with him on his show and pick his brain. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to get a, a front seat to how a conversation might go when we on the phone. So without further ado, I want to bring on the brother, Blackwater, the Meta Magician. Give thanks. You there, bro? Yes, indeed. You, uh, you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, get black. How's everyone? <laughs> everything is everything. True, indeed. We're good True indeed. With you. I, peace and honor, first and foremost, um, to all of those who came before and those who will come after, you know it. Um, it's good to be on, on a, another Tips and Tricks Tuesday, you know, as a as a uh, <laughs> as a, a participant in the in the actual uh, you know I said the the information and not just going in like like we do on a on a certain topic. I pre- I really appreciate you uh, asking me to be a part of this uh, this forum too, and uh, and I'm, I'm humbled as well. So uh, you know. We just go go from wherever you you know where you where you, where you want to go from, and we'll just build. You know, oh, but I, I, I'll give thanks to Brother Trey too for dropping that right there. What he was just um, put to the table. I, I took a note, and I, what I got is visualization plus vibration equals manifestation. So yeah, it is. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm visualization. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Plus the vibration or the energy equals the manifestation of the physical, the physical actualization coming forth from how we view it because all is mind, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, the first principle of the hermetic law, all is mind and mind is universal. So when you add the mm-hmm. energy of the doer, of the, the physical, the information basically, it then personifies into what we have as that manifestation. So, yeah, that, mm-hmm. that it was powerful how he brought that to the table and then what you had on. Um, and brought to to the existence as well, how you brought it down. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to build on that a little bit, but I don't want to go into a tangent rage as a bit. Go ahead and, you know, let you do what you do. Good, thanks. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, what I wanted to ask you was just a working definition of meditation. Mm, a working definition of meditation uh, not to get too layman's term for my own um personal way of defining it, my own definitive would be um meditation ain't what you think, basically. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So when when I say that what I mean is how to utilize meditation without using or or overusing the um conceptualism of or basically overthinking. And meditation, meditation mm-hmm. is a bridge. So when we meditate, that means we're between um, what we would look at as the spiritual realm and the physical realm. The physical realm, mm-hmm. of course, would be nature matter. You know what I'm saying? It's the things that we are we notice as far as uh, our personality is concerned. We're dealing with the sensual nerves like uh, seeing and touch and smelling and taste and, and um, hearing. And all those relate to uh-huh. um, different personifications of, of elementals like fire. Fire is sight. So um, when we when we see something, we see it through the, the activation of the element fire. When we taste something, we see it through the activation of water. When we uh, hear something, we see it through the activation of, of air. When we um, uh-huh. when we smell something, we see it through the activation of um, of earth. So they also relate to a different organ system. So that's nature matter that's that's pretty much initiated through um, universal matter or basically um, intelligent matter. So the intelligence mm-hmm. in in meditation would be um, that would be like the power unit. That's the potential. That's the true essence of our consciousness. The intelligence is the consciousness. It's the knowing. It's the knower. 
it is not the one who personifies itself as being the personality as far as with the nerves. When we initially come into um, our reality, we see things from the perspective of our personality by the age of seven. You know, it's said in there, this is who mm-hmm. we are, my name, my form, this is my mama told me, I, this is what I like, or this is what my mama likes, so I like this, this is what my, how my daddy walks, so I walk like this. This is what my friends do, this so I do this too, so that's our personality. So that's that's basically mm-hmm. built on the sensations of nerves. But as we develop into our higher elevated state of awareness and consciousness through the intelligence, because the intelligence is the bridge. That's the breath form going into the intelligent form of uh, permanence, basically, in that transition, because mm-hmm. all things physical are transitory. So in that meditative state, we deal with both realms simultaneously. So when we actualize, we we steal the mind. Basically, we go from that monkey brain, what, what we like to call it, the animal brain or the analytic tendencies, and we steal the emotions or we, we cause the emotions to become more attuned to the vibration and frequencies that are not apparent to the physical personality by way of the intelligent, which is the intelligent matter that's forming the nature matter, which we reside in as a physical entity in the vehicle. So the vehicle, mm-hmm. so to speak, is, is being operated and driven by the intelligence. But the personality sometimes gets um, obscured or darkened or becomes ignorant to the fact that it is being uh, uh, it is automatically being driven by something that has already written out its um, soul essence. It's so the soul is already doing all of these things beforehand, right? So what so, what happens is the person. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you this: so, okay, so could we say that the so the personality assumes itself to be real and to be in control then? In this situation True. that you're describing? True. And, and through the meditative process, the persona, the person, or the through sound, you know, because all things basically are, based, are built on subtle particles like atoms, electrons, neutrons, and those are in a constant state of vibration. And we know that all vibrations generate sound waves. So when we, sometimes we might, just, we might sit down in meditation or something to manifest and we're just visualized. We'll sit and we'll think on this thing, we'll think on this thing, but we're not putting a vibration of sound or the quality of the vibration of sound or frequency that is located within the visualization. So when we put the haiku or the power word, the mantra, and connect it with um, the actual visualization, hence the manifestation. That's why I wrote down like visualization plus vibration equals manifestation. Because we, you know, we, we, I see, I've done it a million times where I sit there in meditation, and I just visualize something, and I'm thinking about it, and I'm thinking about it, and I'm wondering why. You know, half times it might happen, it might work out. Sometimes it don't work, and that's one thing about magic; it always works. It should always work. But if it doesn't, then we're doing something incorrect. So I learned mm-hmm. that when I when I take away certain elements of what the physical reality is based on, which is vibration. All sort of particles have that vibration going within it. So that's like the law of vibration, you know what I'm saying, within that's the third hermetic uh, principle. Mm-hmm. Um, so all things vibrate, and it goes from from one to from one to all through that vibration. Everything is interconnected by way of that vibration. You know, so if we disconnect, mm-hmm. if, if I disconnect my internal organs, say, for instance, my heart, to uh, the drum set that's sitting across the room right here. Then when I go over there to play my drums, my heart ain't going to be in it because I'm not seeing how it's already connected to the same creative vibration that formed the heart or that formed the physical reality within the, the structure of this human body that's already and that's also personified outside the human body. I mean, the, the drum set is equivalent to the organ system, basically. It has all the components of, mm-hmm. you know, the liver, the heart, the, you know what I'm saying? So when we're beating the drums, we're actually stimulating certain organs in our body, and that's magic, you know what I'm saying? Because all is mind and mind well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. So just to make sure, because before, before you get too far, I want to make sure I ask this before I 
before I forget. You said when you going back to the visualization visualization plus vibration, uh, i.e. the mantra plus the meditation. Can we say then that the meditation would be like um, esoterica and then the mantra or the vibration would be like the exoteric. So it's like you're forming, you're forming, uh, like we always talk about the Merkaba, you're forming this from the inside out. So mm-hmm. is that a, is that a safe, um, um, yes. summary of, yes, well, not summary, but understanding of what you're saying? Yes, indeed. Basically it's, um, uh, if we go into how systematically speaking, it's like the separation of church from state, basically, or religion from okay. science. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. like all all bodies or techniques that are consciously that will consciously alter the perception of one's identity is magic. So, like when we're dealing with science, we got you know we got these different things that we like. Science means it comes from science, which means to know. So we have all these different techniques that we we've learned like even with stem cell research, you know, I was going to, I'm going to speak on that one in one L, but with stem cell research, it can be looked at as magical, it can be looked at as sorcery as well. But the magic side mm-hmm. of it is the healing process, and the word magic comes the stem of the word uh, magic. Well, I mean meditation has the word midi or med in it, which means mm-hmm. to heal. Midi. So when we are in meditation, we can also heal, which is a physical attribute, but it goes into the intelligent matter in that still, in that still process to where we are starting to heal with the stem cells. When the stem cells are stimulated, so to speak, it, it goes to the unhealthy cell or the degenerative dead cell, and it, it actually replaces it, be it in the mind, the blood, the bone marrow, the liver, the heart, whatever, Part of the body because the stem cell is basically the original cell. The eight, the one, the eight, or the one, the two, the four, the eight, like the um, hermetic, the hermetic axiom, and then develop right. into the whole of the body. So this original eight, mm-hmm. mitosis, um, and it's magical, you know, basically, but it's the magic within from that dark um, essence of melanin or that endo, endo, um, endoderm, you know, what I'm saying as it goes into the mesoderm mm-hmm. and into the endoderm. So when in that triple state, you know what I'm saying, that, that triple stage of the darkness, we develop into a, a physical orb, and that's that's also, like you were saying, that's the Merkle bar within with the, you know, the energy coming down, then the energy going back up with these two um, these two points of exactation, one from spiritual energy and one from the physical energy, electrical and magnetic, as they interconnect and they form this um this this hectogram or this star David Mugan Dawid or the beloved the beloved star, you know. So um, mm-hmm. like science again, but science and magic, they're complementary approaches to the world of 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 of, of like po- the polarities, like an on and off switch. You can't have one without the other. It's like the, the temperature game. Mm-hmm. You got hot cold. So science and magic. They're basically the same thing because, you know, when you deal with science, like engineering, we spoke on it once. There we go. Engineering, engineering is dealing with what? It's dealing with the elements of, of nature. So engineering exactly. is, basically, is basically controlling the forces of nature, be it water, be it air, be it earth, or be it, um, or be it fire. So in, in haiku or the haikus of magic, we deal with the manipulation of the elements of nature. You know what I'm saying? So we go back to mm-hmm. fire, air, water, and earth, which is also dealing with the perceptions of man through sight, again, taste, um, smelling, as well as um, hearing. Because all of those relate to different, but I mean, touch can be a, a sensation or it can be the nerve touching all of those different um, other senses. You know what I'm saying? It's just depending mm-hmm. on how we look at it. But, but basically, that nerve. Is, genera- is generated from the intelligent matter that resides within the atom or resides within the structure of the molecule that forms the DNA. So the expansion of the DNA is it, dependent on the quality of the intelligence, which is the breath. So when we meditate, 
one of the key aspects of meditation, of course, is deep breathing. All right. So mm-hmm. now, and, we, and we've talked about this before. Going, just going to Phil Jackson a little bit. You know, you 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 got the football thing, right. and you know what I'm saying. You play basketball back in the day, so I was I was following them. You know, Chicago Bulls. Everybody wanted to be like Mike. You know what I'm saying? Everybody wanted to be like mm-hmm. Mike back then. You know. So, what did Phil Jackson do that was different from the coach prior to the Chicago Bulls that enhanced their game? and led them to three NBA championships and Michael Jordan getting his three rings and whatnot. Zen Buddhist, bro. Yeah, Zen Buddhist. They call him the Zen Buddhist. They call him the Zen Coach Zen. You know what I'm saying? He Uh introduced them to meditation. It was called the One Mind, One Breath Meditation, where they would sit down in training, like summer training, and they would actually meditate together in the locker room. And then they took that thing home and did the homework with it, and they found that it actually enhanced their focus, it enhanced their vitality or their energy, their livelihood. It enhanced their intelligence within the structure of the game. If we, if we remember, Michael Jordan was a ball hog before, mm-hmm. you know, he thought he, could, he thought he could win the game by himself before Phil Jackson he had to. Because he, he pretty much because he had to. Even when Scottie Pippen was on there, B.J. Armstrong, all the other cats, they were still there. But they weren't focused. They didn't have calmness of the game. They didn't have the the, uh, the they didn't have the movement of the flow like Jordan did. Jordan pretty much had the team mm-hmm. on his shoulder. He was at it, you know what I'm saying? And he was the bull for real, you know what I'm saying? He was carrying the young right. for the whole team. You know what I mean? But after Phil Jackson showed up, showed the team taught the team meditation, how to sit, how to you put the shoulders right, how to breathe. You know, he even taught him. Taught, he showed him t- about Tai Chi instructors in yoga instructors, all that in. But it, they pretty much um, vibrated or, or they resonated with the um, with the meditation because it was sitting still. It was calmness, and it, like I was saying, it developed them into a more, having more awareness of the game and slowing down everything within the structure of the game. So if you notice, they come down the court. High speed game to be they down ten in the NBA finals or whatever. Next thing you know, they up ten within two minutes. You know what I'm saying? After the game, still they end up the winning. Offense. Right. You know what I'm saying? Still running the triangle, offense, triangle. right? Yep. There you go. There you go. Yep. And and then he went and incorporated the same ideas with the Lakers. And and, and to mm-hmm. this day, Kobe Bryant still uses meditation after retiring. He, he meditates every morning. And who is who just won? Who just won uh, how many did uh, uh, Cleveland? They won, what, two so far, something like that? Mm-hmm. Guess what LeBron James does? Mm. He meditates. Meditate. Right? And, you, I mean, look at his shoulders when he's coming down the court, and he sees the whole court. And then he swiftly passes it to the left or right. And, it, and it, I mean, but he wanted to be like Mike. So you have nature matter, and then you have these two individual ways to do it, such like Kobe Bryant and Michael and, and Kobe Bryant and um, LeBron James. You have the, mm-hmm. the the mantra, "I want to be like Mike." I want to be like Mike. Then you have these two mm-hmm. individual ways to do it that's growing and becoming, or you know, they, they're using the the consciousness. Consciousness again is basically. Uh, the knowing. The being is the information. It's the actualization of the physical going into the doer, the doing. That's the energy. So the energy is the doing. It's the doer inside of the trial self. So the trial self is the knower. Then the, the thinker is the information or the being. And then the energy is the doer or the doing. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, Bruce Lee said, it's not the it's not the um, doer. It's the doing. It's not the actor. It's the acting. It's not the mm-hmm. it's not the knowing, it's the know it's not the knower, it's the knowing. So as we utilize the information, like LeBron LeBron James uh, knowing the, the mantra and then going into the actual doing with the energy, it, it formalized into becoming or being the information of manifestation with the rings, like also with Michael Jordan. He becoming more aware of the situation through the meditation, the bridge of bringing in the intelligence, already athletic, just had to slow down a little bit to really see 
like you know, slow down, smell the coffee or whatever, smell the beans, smell the, the legumes or the, the 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 tubers, you know what I'm saying, the root vegetables. But basically, mm-hmm. getting back in tune with nature matter through the intelligent matter, which intelligence again is the bridge, and that's the breath. So when the breath came back in, you know, because as we grow, we we develop, we develop a, a shallow a breathing technique in place of deep conscious breathing. So as that shallow breathing occurs, what takes place is the cutting off of the organ system from the diaphragm down. We utilize the only basically one-seventh of the potential or the power of our, our lung system after the age of 30. So we're obstructing a lot of the potential of our growth because we're not giving energy or vitality to the organ system within. So the rest of the the, the um, symphony can't play in tune or in harmony with the entirety of the orchestra. You dig what I'm saying? Let me uh exact no doubt. Let me put let me let me um highlight on something you said there. You said slow down. You said Jordan was the bull, carried the yoke of the team. But he had to learn how to slow down. How can we say that across the board with any magical modality that one of the key components is slowing down to be able to allow the magic to work? Yes, indeed. Yep. Um, if I can build on that, we got the so-called 20 laws of magic, right? It's really okay. one is really infinite. But basically the 19th law of magic states the law of pattern or the law of knowledge. But in that law of knowledge, it states that in all systems or matrices, the most probable state is rest, the rest state, mm. because you will be able to disperse the, a more, a more there, there will be a more uh, stronger availability of energy in rest. You know, when we go to bed at night, for instance, um, pondering is converted from into is converted from well, pondering interacts with tryptophan and converted into melatonin. Mm-hmm. When that takes place, mm-hmm. melatonin interacts with the sex cell, basically the ovary and the, the uh, sper- spermazoa, to stimulate the stem cells. So while we're resting at night, the stem cell, along with melatonin and the sex cell, heals us, or basically. You know what I'm saying? It's doing the magic on the body so it can heal properly. Now, with the sorcery that's mm-hmm. taking place, we have medicine. So medicine goes in if we're popping pills at night or, or whenever through the day, like antibiotics or whatever, to, to try to get the inflammation out or infection or whatever. The pill goes in or the medicine goes in, covers the cell or, you know, this, this living matter, the original state, and it's said to... The stem, because the stem cell job is basically replace the genitive cells again, you know what I'm saying, or, or dead cells. So when the stem goes in there, it says, hey, uh, shit, I ain't got no job to do. I ain't got no magic to do. So it turns around because the sorcerer has put this medicine in there, you know what I'm saying? So the sorcerer mm-hmm. going in there, working this, you know, sorcery on it, we put this medicine in the body, and we're wondering why we keep getting sick or we keep getting hit, um, hit with these different ailments over the years of our expansion and transitions. And it's due to basically that right there. But when we have that available space of, of sitting still and the energy from the stem cell, is, has this, um, it has the uh, actual, it can actually go in and do what it has to do because there's no toxicity or, it, it, you know, the things that whatever this westernized um, medicine or allopathic medicine has, and it has to offer it. It's not in there because we've purged and we've taken it out, then the magic will occur, but that's in that state of rest, though. So in the state of rest, when we sit in meditation, and it doesn't have to be about healing or anything, but when we are sitting in a meditation, like you said, we still the mind. So in that stillness, we're at, and we're not thinking, the thoughts are going to come. They're transitory, though. So when we're dealing with intelligent matter, intelligent matter initiates from the realm of permanence. Transitory means it's only in a state of transition, meaning it's not permanent, mm-hmm. it's not real, it's an illusion, you know. So that's the trick technology behind magic. When we're thinking that, okay, I'm going to manifest this car, yeah, and, and, okay, this car, yeah, i got to see this car, you know, whatever, you know, whatever. 
but we're thinking about a physical object that's transitory. It's cool to get the car, yeah. Where did the car initiate from? Intelligent matter, the bridge. Uh-huh. So when we let go of the thought of getting the car and seeing, wanting the car and all that, but then we have a, a mantra or we have, I like to just make up words, you know what I'm saying, sometimes. I, I, I spoke on that before. Just make up your own mantra. Don't even go to a book or nothing like that. Just come come to an agreement in your mind that this is what I, I, I want this to be right here. Instead of it being car, I want to say in my mind, Uka to my papa. Or something, you know what I'm saying? Just say that over and over. Uka tu papa, uka tu papa, uka tu papa. And the demon has to know what it means. Such a, exactly, just making up a word in the schedule from all these different, uh, you know, symbols that we have. Exactly, and and it works. You know what I'm saying? Because it's your, it's our, it's your magic. You, I mean, what did uh, Lester Crowley say? He was like, uh, he said, uh, uh, what was the statement in that book? Damn, um, do as I will. There is you know no truth. The whole, yeah, that is the whole of the law. Do as thou wilt, something like that. Oh, yeah, do as thou wilt is the whole of the law. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So hold on, so, let, me, let me pause right there. Let me ask you okay. this. So what I'm gathering is take the focus off of the object because that can become a stop gap or a, a limiter in the magic because you've relegated it to just an object, correct? Correct. Right in his act, yes. Because Let now it's the object. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Finish it. Oh, no. you right on. you right on. I was just saying because now it becomes the objective. It becomes more of the law instead of the law being limit, limitless like the, you know, like the law, like the spirit, you know what I'm saying, like you were saying earlier. Well, it, let me ask you this: If we take, like you know, when we do when we do sigil magic, let's say if I say, okay, uh, I'm creating this sigil and it represents ten thousand dollars, but then I draw it to where it, none of this is recognizable. This is what makes it a sigil, so I can I can now trigger my subconscious mind, you know, to to activate. Now that's the source. Could we also, in doing that, uh, have our, our our end goal as something instead of the car? Uh, think about what is the purpose of the car. Mm-hmm. Let's say if I'll say if okay, I create my the car has been has been changed into a subconscious mental sigil or or, or a, a mantra, you know, like you said. Obi Wan or whatever, and then <laughs> can we create us a a a, a, bre- a, a a ending point to capture this? Like saying, you know, I want the car, and being completely honest with yourself, I want the car so the girl at the gym will pay me some attention, or I want the, I and mean, you know what I'm saying, being completely honest, and then, or I need the car because. I need to get to this job in North Dallas. You know, how how can that be factored into a magical equation? Or is that, a, does it have a place? Is it necessary? It or is does. It just... Yes, it does. It, it, the way you um, just stated it, the way you brought it to the forefront right there, it works that way as well. It, and it all depended on the personality of the indivisible dual itself. Yeah, mm. now this is from my own, um, you know what I'm saying, perception and from my own experiences. When I place a lot of uh, attention, you know, again, attention, that's a uh, shin is, is uh, basically the the cycle of life or basically it's the, the spirit of life and then, well, attention, mm-hmm. meaning life. And then we have sin, meaning, um, the, you know, the cycle. So, or, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, the spirit of life. So when we when we put in our life spirit or our attention to, and, and, we, and we, like even if we, if we, even when I was being honest, I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to do this money um, ritual because I, I, I got I to gotta get these things together for the house and all that, you know, 
So it it come out the money ritual work and everything, but I end up getting um uh, I, I I think we we uh, talked about it. I get I end up getting enough money, and it wasn't even money that came to me. The ancestors was like, you you don't need to get the house fixed right now. You need to get your key fixed. So I ended up getting <laughs> right. You four thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, I ended up getting the four thousand uh, dollars through a di- through a dental uh, plan from um, disability or whatever to get my teeth fixed. But it, it panned out that way because that's what I needed at that time. You know, eventually right. the other funds came years later to help assist, uh, well, help uh, with funding for the house and everything. But basically, everything happens on, in the right timing. So when my when our brain is or our, our thinking is uh, caught up on the physical plane, the exteriorization of that thought has to be balanced through. And it has to be balanced through the indivisible dual self action. Basically what I mean is for every thought that a person puts out through sound and through the visualization, then that thought is going to come back to that person through sound and through that visualization. So it doesn't mm-hmm. it doesn't matter, you know what I'm saying, whatever the thought is, it could be a high vibration, lower vibration, it's going to come back to the one who initiated the thought. So in meditation, I found that the best thing to do is just let go of the object and I mean, and go straight to the subjective realm, go to that sunken place. Basically. You know what I'm saying? When I when I saw the mm-hmm. movie or you know, and I saw the, I saw the the downside of the sunken place in the hypnotic state of of how man goes into trance because we go into trance and everything we do, everything is trance. Every emotion takes us into a trance state. So when I noticed that, I was like, damn, there you go into the into the the sunken place. But then I was, I was thinking about, I said, hold on. That sounds very familiar with that vibration of what how they say in something. So I went into my studies and, and I actually that that's one of the mantras that I use in meditation is salt and ark, and it means the water or the essence of life. So when I and I in, in the part of the meditation, it actually it actually goes. Uh, I did it before on here. Um, it's uh, it starts off from that point. It says z d z d z d z uh Anna Kampa, Z Dinjir, um Ad Kampa, Z Dinjir, Badu Kampa, Z Dinjir, Kia Kampa. Basically that means um the spirit, the Z Dinjir basically means the, the spirit of um and then Aga means fire, remember. So it's re- Kampa means remember. This is Sumerian script, but Z Dinjir Ad Kampa means the spirit of fire. Zidinjir An Kampa means mm-hmm. the spirit of air. Zidinjir Badur Kampa means the spirit of water. Zidinjir uh, Kia Kampa means the spirit of of um, of earth. But those are those four elements again. So we acknowledge the spirit of those elements through nature matter, how we how the forces or the elementals flow in by way of the intelligent matter forming, going through the breath form to formulate the existence of what we call physical reality. But then it goes into Pertimaru, Pertimaru, Song of Amin Ra. So Pertimaru basically means um, come forth into the light, come forth into the light, Song of Amin Ra. Song of means the essence of light, the hidden light. So the hidden light, the essence so, of life, talking about that primordial essence, that primordial spark, that, that melanin, that, you know, that inner melanin, that external melanin meeting and, and conjoining through that meditative process within the mind structure right there, the pineal and uh, pituitary gland, when they mate and they join and they fuse both sides, left and right, and they had that sacred marriage, they, that hydrous uh, gamios, where they actually formulate those different hormones to keep the body in harmony and sing that, that song, you know what I'm saying, that universal song or multiverse. So, so you merged Sumerian. Is this, did, you, did you make this merger? Because you, 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 you merged Sumerian and Commission. Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah I did that. Is that yeah. what you was telling me about this new technique you created? Is this one of them? Yes, which you one? Say you said you had merged across some streams. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's it. That's uh, that's one of them. Um, it, it goes into the Watch the Summer Twi, um, that the, the I guess you could say the yoga uh, modality that we developed it through uh, – Watch the Dekamanji Moors, and it has its um, foundation within 
all those different ancient modalities of high principles or esoteric mysticism, basically, and how utilizing um, knowledge of self, which I say is knowledge of the self or knowledge of the originating abstract potential within man, you know what I'm saying, within the mind, and then how we bring that breath in to build, you know, that, that, that Bill Frost, you know what I'm saying, that Bill Frost bridge or that rainbow bridge, that substantial nigga, or how when it's, when we put enough of that essence within and we don't exert or street it out to where we uh, lose um, funds in our, in our bank account, you know what I'm saying? We, we, we put a certain right. amount in, but then, you know, we start taking out, taking out, making loans, you know, or, or giving loans out here, then buying the next thing you know, we go in there to the bank account, we in the red because we've exerted too much about that internal potential, that internal power, that magic. We've used, magic is mm-hmm. used at all times. It's magical to go to bed at night and wake up, put that foot on the floor. Uh-oh. You know, that's awesome. Uh-oh. You know what I mean? Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold up now. You're going too fast. <laughs> we got to back up on okay. that. All right. I got magic. Wait a minute. I got to write that shit down. Magic. Say that again. It's mm, used all what the I time. Yeah, it's magical. Magic is, is alchemy. When we get up in the morning, when we go to bed at night, it's magic. It's uh, it's power. We're using power. We're using energy, and that energy is again, you know, uh, it's basically the doing. You know what I'm saying? So it's magical in us doing what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? Everything that we, even when it's on the bad side, what we look at is negative. It's the magic that's within it. Magi is the root word of magic. So magic, it, magi mm-hmm. means to will something into existence. So when we will something, we have to use what power, will power, but also where that will power develops from, from spiritual power, or from mm-hmm. the sakit, the chim. So that sakim is, is located in the throat plexus. So the throat plexus is what the vibration of sound. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it goes back again to how when we say certain things. But what, what we say certain things and we verbalize it a certain way, it could be an emotion of how I could say to I could say to my girlfriend, "Fuck you," and mean it in a loving manner. Whereas I could say it to somebody I hate, "Fuck you," and mean it in a hateful manner. <laughs> but it's the right. emotion behind it. It is the emotion that causes the vibration to interact with the other person magically through the power within. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The motion of the vibration. Wow. Wow. Well, brother, I, I wanted to. Um, I know. I know this is just not even the tip of the iceberg. Um, are you you going on next week, and you gonna go in depth on 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 the the, the stem cell science as it applies? Oh, uh, what you introduced tonight. Yeah. You most definitely. Uh, meditation is my medication. Yeah, stem cell, um, stem cell, stimulating the stem cell <laughs> from the root of the tooth. All right, so tooth. next root of the tooth. So y'all, y'all done heard it. Next week, you need to be tuned in. Meditation is my medication, and you know the spirit working. Cause when I talk to you, we, you know, you already had this on your mind about something dealing with meditation, and then the topic that we talking about tonight had something to do with it. So it's funny how the spirit moves and you know what is coming to the forefront that needs to be put on that front lobe of everybody at, at a particular time, you know, uh, especially coming out of retrograde and you have people, people talking real greasy to each other and just, just, you know, everybody's just, you know, at each other's throat. It's it's like it. No, what better time is that to be reflective and go in mm-hmm. to the storehouse as they talk about in the Bible? Go in the storehouse, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to bring on the, uh, the 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 young God, Krishna. But can you? And then, then hopefully we can have an interaction here on the back end where, where where we can just we can all just just build if you if you got time. Um, I'm you. Okay, what can do you mind sharing? Uh, one of your 
or maybe just what you just said. Do you mind sharing that again, uh, your Sumerian and Comitian um, blend that you touched on? Do you mind going back through that? No problem. Uh, no, not at all. Um, yeah, I've run through it. it it's uh, It starts out, um, well, if I go through the whole of it, it's, well, you know what I'm saying, the, the W-H-O-L-E. Um, of it. it, it starts out um, Ziag, Zian, Zibadu, Zikia. So basically, we're just calling on on those energies. I normally start out with uh, Gula, You, Rikes, Nune. All this, this Sumerian, I love this Sumerian. It, I mean, it, it's kind of windy, so but I, I'm not gonna go through all that. So basically. Go through the first part, what I did, I did earlier. So that would be Z, then G, I, Kampa. Again, that's Z, I, D, I, N, G, E, R, then, um, then um, the word Ag, A, G, or A, G, G, A, meaning fire, and then Kampa, that's K, A, N, P, A. So that means remember the spirit of fire. And then Z Dinjir Ana Kampa. So everything is the same, but you replace the Ag with Ana, that's A N N A, that means air. So remember the spirit of air. And then um, Badur, that's water, that's B A D U R. So Z Dinjir Badur Kampa. And then Kia, that's K I A Kampa. So Z Dinjir Kia Kampa. So that remember, that means remember the earth. Remember the spirit of the earth. So all that's relating to nature matter again and how the intelligent matter is in flux within nature matter. So we're building on both realms of permanence, not just the realm of transition transitioning from the physical in that one dimension. One dimension is what we call the third dimension. But basically, it's one dimension uh-huh. because it's dealing with the physical dimension or the physical plane. So this one dimension now is in conjunction with the other dimensions or densities by way of remembering the intelligence within or the spirit within. So after that, it's pertem haru, pertem haru. That means to come forth into the light, come forth out of the darkness into the light. Pertem haru, pertem haru. Um, then it's sa un Amen Ra. Sa'un Ak. Ak um, meaning life, Sa'un, the essence of Amen Ra, the hidden light. So the hidden light, the essence of the hidden light of life, basically. So come forth into the light, come forth into the light, the essence of the hidden light. Um, you know what I'm saying? The, the essence of the hidden light of life. Actually, okay. I mean, and there's more to it than that, but um, I'm just and I'll just put this in there with it. Min ab um ak umaat ich herek aku ich herek. So min ab is M E N A B E M ak. Again, that's A U N K H for A N K H. Then M E M Maat N A A T. So that's um men ab um ak um maat, which means stabilize the heart to live in truth. And then it's Ij Harek Aku Ij Harek. That's I D J Ij Harek H R E K Aku is a K U, and that means um, show your face, ancestors. Ancestors show your face. Ich herek, face is haru. Ich ich is show, and aku is ancestors. So ancestors show your face. Ancestors show your face. Ich herek, aku ich herek. And basically, the ancestors is the intelligence. That's the that's the intelligent matter that's flowing through all things that are physical. That's that. That you know, the internal melanin that's composing the physical body. You might call it dark energy, dark matter, 
what not, but it's the different titles or whatever that can obstruct. That there we go back again to that stealing of the mind and taking the um taking away the the the, the you know that that verbal chatter that we have ongoing in the brain sometimes through meditation. By by way of this, it goes back into the DNA, and because DNA is again vibration and sound. You know, with the with the script of ACTH or whatnot, or you know, with the lettering group of, of Yahweh, basically Yahweh. You know, but right. basically when we do, we we change it up. You know what I'm saying? But um, that I, I think I did. I uh, song on song on Ra. That's S A E N A N K H Amin Ra. A M E N hyphenated R A. And I, I think that's the only one I did. You know. Put it all together right there out there for him. Right on, right on. Is there any chance you're gonna have that anywhere on a document like on your website? Yes, I can I can put that on there. It's built and it's up and running. It's called the Four Directions of Help uh, dot com. Uh it's kind of uh still it needs some pieces to put in there. Uh, might have to give it to brother Brother Trey, I, I I haven't checked yours out, but you said yours is live and going too, so I'm gonna go I'm gonna go and uh, peep that in a few minutes here and see what you're talking about on that on that note. But uh, yeah, I, I can throw I'm gonna put as much information I can up on that on that web page and and give it you know give back you know what I'm saying it was gifted to us, so we are here as as uh, master builders. You know I'm a I'm a student as well, so. As I'm learning, I have learned that one thing for sure while we are on this path and this journey is that whatever we have been given, it has no purpose of uh, being solidified into that one individual way because we are all here together. So it is a it is a common goal of mine as well as you, I know, to give back because it's in the heart, you know what I'm saying? I love myself, so I got to love everybody else, you know what I mean? No doubt. That's real shit. No doubt. All right, brother. Well, I, I, I appreciate you blessing us with the science. I know it. I know you weren't able to really go in like you can, but I want to um, thank you for allowing me um, to be able to sit in on these broadcasts that you have and, you know, and uh, and thank you for coming on tonight and allowing you know this to flow the way it is, you know. Um, and uh, like I say, man, beautiful times. So yes, indeed. Thank you, brother. Give peace. Thanks. Give black. You know it. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. All right. Well, we're gonna segue into the young God. He's sitting up, sitting down there at the bottom of the Lone Star State, ready to spit some fire. What's going on, brother Chris? Brother Jamal, what's good? What's good, man? Shit, man, out here in that four four firing <laughs> up. I'm looking at the, the you. young guns around me out here. They outside. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what's going on? Well, I wanted you to, I wanted you to build on what we got going here. Of course, we're talking magic, meditation, money, and manifestation. You know, of course, we ain't gonna spend a lot of time just talking about money because it really, we're gonna say that it, we these modalities we're talking about are necessary to address money. You know, right now, uh, brother Blackwater just came and and dropped on the meditation aspect of magic. Now I know that you deal hard with uh, the altar work, um, dealing with mm-hmm. ancestral energy, right, and right. like I said at the beginning. I wanted to basically do this to tie all these things in together to show that they, you know, I had an old trainer when I was bodybuilding competitively, and he he, he told me, he said, Jamal, 
there's a million ways to get a person in shape. I'm just going to show you my way. And that always stuck with me, and I apply that to these different modalities of working your inner magic, your meditation, your ancestral uh, activation, which we, we've learned that, you know, they are inside of us when they transition, you know, um, residual magic or reading, whatever we're doing, that we are all working a form of magic. And right. with that in mind, I want you just to um, give me an introduction into the mindset you have about dealing with your altar work. Yeah, so and mindset magic. I have and and magic. My mindset is yin and yang, left and right brain. You know, um, when I started studying Apollo, one thing that stuck out is they talked about the two pillars. And the one pillar was the ancestral pillar or the relative realm or the ancestral realm. And the other pillar was dealing with the deities, template energies and things of that, those type of spirits. They're both spirits, you know, both spirit concepts. And, you know, uh, that's, those are the, you know, masculine, feminine principle, you know, um, uh, ones and zeros, binaries, you know, things that are, you know, that those two, um, two halves of the same essence. So that's what, that's one of the main things that comes to mind. Mm-hmm. Still there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I know you had uh, you had asked me, you know, when I when I was saying that I was, you know, really leaning, wanting to get into more of the ancestral work because, you know, what I've, you know, the understanding coming with coming in dealing with the deity aspect, um, you know, I was I was uh, leaning so hard to remind me of like where with um with my right hand with overusing it and leaning on it too much then it became agitated mm-hmm. so same thing with working you know i it, it let me know i needed to shift to this other side because the ancestral work is really serves a lot of mundane purposes because the ancestors are relatives that transition they were down here to have a human experience the deity side of it they'd never been in uh experience the human experience to be able to relate to bills and money and, you know, uh, uh, mortgage and what have you, you know? So that Mm -hmm. concept, that particular pillar or that left pillar, um, that they talk about in Paolo would be dedicated to being, to handling the physical, the human experience side of things and the surface level side of things, you know? So if it's something like, you know, um, and, you know, you hear the teachers, Brother Panic, you know, OG Bobby him, and I ain't saying that they ain't already said, you know, ain't nothing new other than the sun. But uh, mm-hmm. when it comes to, let's say, uh, you got a, a relative that transitioned that was good with um, when it came to f- uh, flipping and, and resources, getting resources, you know, like uh, like my grandfather Claude. So he would be some somebody that I would divine to and would say, hey, you know, pass me on an abundance of knowledge. You know, um, and then what I would do is then apply it for the understanding, you know, cultivated that wisdom. That's the knowledge coming from the ancestral realm and the action or the wisdom or the cultivation, just like the seed when the sperm goes into the womb and it's cultivated in the womb. And then when the baby is born, that is the understanding or the um, uh, after the action and the cultivation is applied, you have a finish, you have a, a product that comes out of that. Um, and supreme mathematics, they call that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So that's just mm-hmm. the fruit that was born from the seed, you know. So, you know, uh, that's what they can offer. They can't do the work for us, but they can pass on, you know, that, like they said, the aha moments, the light bulb above the head, you know, whenever they're able to, you know, and the thing about having the mind, but Penny speak a lot about this, is that when the mind is really fixated on mundane thoughts, and that's a problem that I've had is going, having so much uh, about, you know, uh, taking care of bills and things of that nature before going to sleep actually is like uh, like muck. So when it comes to 
spirits being able to communicate because they're on a higher vibration. So if our mind, if we're, we're if our thought is on a lower vibration, then it makes it that much more difficult for that thought to connect. So when it comes to, you know, just going back to this concept of, and, and Apollo of these two pillars, is that one thing that I can't understand about uh, spirit. And uh, there was this video game, uh, Final Fantasy VII, this RPG role-playing game on PlayStation I played when I was a kid. And uh, Mm -hmm. big, you know, real popular game. And it had this concept where they had these crystals called materia. And as the character, when you got Mm. the materia crystals, the crystals, it increases your dexterity. So what dexterity does for the character in the game is it increases their speed. So what I came to understand about spirit is that's the science of movement. So everything that when it comes to us moving and the principle of vibration, everything uh, vibrates, like they say in the cab- the cabalion, the rest, everything moves, everything vibrates. So when it comes uh-huh. to us moving, us talking now, and us, those listening, and those sitting still, solid rock, is that all of this movement comes from these two concepts, the concept of this uh, crystallized template energy that we call deity and this experience of us putting ourselves in creation in this human, what we call the human experience in that realm. And that's what's moving us. And that's what's uh, motivating us whenever we make these decisions. It's those two things. So being in balance with those two particular aspects is how to cover the whole gamut, the yin and yang, the holistic way of dealing with, you know, okay. this day-to-day shit. Yeah. Hold on. I got to stop you right there because I, I see, because I got to highlight when I hear these commonalities come out. Now, the brother just talked about meditation is a bridge. And what I'm hearing you say is I'm hearing you echo the same thing from your ancestral work. You're talking about a bridge. Right. Right? You're talking about a a, a, right. a a degree of balancing. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I want to make sure we we highlight that for the people that um, for any magic to be effective, there has to be a stilling or you know a bridging that goes on for it to be effective. Another thing I wanted to ask you to go in, I'm uh, and um, not to cut you off, but I'm old. So no, I'll it's all good. Shit. Yeah, we freestyle. Ancestor and deities on the same altar. Talk to me about because you touched on about <laughs> the deity does not have that relationship, that personal relationship. That'd be almost like the uh, collective unconscious. And then, but the ancestor has that personal connection. So I was like the personal consciousness. So tell me what, if, if a person were to put the ancestor and the deity on the altar, what would be the equation they want to look to find to line those up? Or could they? Yeah, it makes me think about like Francisco de los Siete Reyes. And that's okay. uh, you know you get these you get these characters or uh, you know sometimes people and they line them up with deities happens all the time we do it you know with the people that we know we'd be like oh that's you know that slipped up oh he he a war deity you know what I'm saying he's our banda et cetera et cetera you know so mm-hmm. um, so you know they could look there you know just in terms of an example of an established you know, uh, you know, Paolo deity, where you have those two concepts together. So, yeah, they, yeah, that go, that work. Okay, okay, cool. How much do you factor when you're doing your work? I know I talked to Blackwater about this, about you know, being truthful about what is the end game or what's my what's my What's my end point for why I'm doing this, or whatever I'm doing? How important is that to you in your work 
you know, we know we got to have a starting point of initiation. Um, how important is it to you to identify what your, uh, if I dare say, your end game strategy is for whatever movement you're making, or is that something you take into account? Yeah, I do. Yeah, um, well, you know, my understanding is is that when they talk about in the in the Bible, paraphrasing that you can't take anything with you, and so mm-hmm. when it comes to you know, um, you know, being you know down here and you know this, um, you know, we came down here to experience all things, you know. Now mm-hmm. at the same time. You know, I came to understand that one has to be prepared to leave it all behind and not hold on. Mm. So what we know is the illusion, you know, um, when we learn that in basic Christianity, that you can't hold on to that. That's the anchor. That's why they put it on the side of churches. That's the anchor to hold you down. To, mm. You know, so at with I'm my thing is, I you know, I like being active in, you know, uh, getting into understanding, you know, and, and at the same at the same time, you know, I'm not anchored down to you know, so with that being said, when it comes to concepts that deal with this, these uh Brahma, the inhale, the big crunch, you know, uh apocalypse on X Men, I can identify with that because that's all they were saying. Is that this is this is an illusion and just like in basic Christianity, you gotta be willing to let go of that when while while still, you know, doing your you know, day to day, your day to day work. You know, so yeah. So you approach it. You approach your work with a mindset of I'm working through this because I, I I keep finding these correlations, which is good. Brother Blackwater kept talking about transitory. You know, everything is in a transitory state. So it sounds to me from what you're saying, you have a mindset where you're understanding that you're in something. It's like, uh, you know, I think I get numbers turned around sometimes. So it's Romans. It's either Romans 12 and 2 or Romans 2 and 12. Very familiar scripture. Be ye in the world but not of the world. Right. So... I'm sure. hearing, are you saying that you're approaching this from a transitory state? Like, hey, I know uh, I'm just passing through this shit, and I'm I'm using these modalities to manipulate this shit as I'm passing through. Is that kind exactly. of what you... Okay. Mm-hmm. So how do, exactly. we, how do we then... How do we then... I want you to go in on this... How does a person stay sanity knowing that the shit is fake, you know? Um, and even though we know, we know what the world just, you know, we just discovered, you know, you're saying it's transitory in the world and the other world. How do you keep your sanity moving through all of this? And how does your <laughs> ritual work? Help you in that <laughs> Man a lot um, You know Having control over my emotion You know I I found out you know there was a time when I When I didn't have it You know so this you know getting into You know the occult And you know studying you know Different religions and you know It, it helped first and foremost With that and uh, You know Um you know, uh, when it comes to you know keeping keeping one's sanity, like <laughs> I mean, it's it's real, it's real like you know, and uh, so it ain't we ain't gonna sugarcoat it, you know. Um, I for me, what uh, keeps my sanity in it is being in the fight. If I'm not in the fight the way I want to be in the fight, then that's what you know uh, fucks with my sanity. You know, so it could be different things for different people, you know. Um, so, you know, just embracing, 
you know, um, like let's say if something comes up and, you know, I have to embrace a situation, but I'm going in knowing from being in it many times that whatever occurs, I'm going to come out more powerful. So totally embracing that and not faltering from that is what has been a successful experiment for me. So, but, you know, people from different perspectives do different experiments and just go with what works. I remember uh, 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 Randy, uh, father, a uh, cat I knew in Pleasantville, father used to say that, uh, you know, um, basically do what works. You know, it's not uh, when it comes to catching the W, you know. Um, so, yeah, just doing what works. And when it experiments, you know, just echo in the sentiment of the show, you know, when uh, – is when, you know, things, when, when somebody, when you do something, make a choice, and you see the result, then um, you have to, you know, come from a different angle, you know, in order and just go with what works, you know. So magic is that is, is that simple. It's going with what works. You know, you, if you're dealing with all mm-hmm. things, they move around some things, you know, just like in your life in order to bring things back into a balance. So, yeah. Explain to me your mindset when you're setting up your altar. Walk me through, you know, because, you know, we've had our conversations, you know. I do. I got my altars. and But for somebody who is maybe new to this, what's the – is there a so-called right and wrong way nah. setting up your altar? And, and, and what's your – how do you vibe when you putting it together? Me personally, like, um, you know, it's a freestyle. It's it's some study work. I grabbed some books, you know, uh, done some painting. You know, I've done some things that I ain't really, you know, uh, accustomed to doing, thinking outside the box, not putting limitations on it. Uh, whether it comes, it could be, you know, you could pick up things uh, in, from the altar from anywhere. So it's just like, how they say when you you can learn something from anybody because everything contains knowledge. Mm-hmm. You know, rock. Mm. You know, uh, studying solid rock contains. You know, one can learn so much from obtaining the knowledge from that uh, concept that we call a rock. You know, so. But then you know other people. You know they don't even um, deal in all to work, and we you know we've had these discussions and it's it reminds me of. Um, on this, uh, my favorite Japanese anime show, Bleach, there's a character named Ikaku. And Ikaku, he mm-hmm. doesn't do, like, like spirit techniques. He just uses his mind and his, and his matter, and he's just one of the coldest motherfuckers on there. And that's what works mm-hmm. for him. And his, mentali- and his mentality is cold, you know. So he's real hum- real humble spirit, you know. And uh, so, you know, just do what works. You know, if you don't, you know, for people who don't want to, it ain't no judgment on, on somebody who does all the work. If you don't do it and what you're doing works, just continue doing what you're doing. Just pass that knowledge to us and shit. And we, we you know, we can both build and grow from that shit. Facts. So what I'm gathering is that, <clears throat> is that, um, you know, going back to the Bible. And how, why is it we keep going back to the Bible? Because that is a magical fucking book. It's a book of magic. So you everything we talk about, we can go back and find an example. It says you must come as a child, you know, to enter the kingdom. So are you tapping into you know, is that is that that, that child mind coming into play when you um when you are thinking about the composition of you, because I'm hearing you say you study some books, but you also, you said, well, I might do some painting. I might. So uh, once again, I know this is a long winded ass question, but I'm thinking as I'm, as I'm talking and asking the brother mentioned the heroes, Gamos, the Holy marriage. So what I, when you just made this statement, you said, I might get a few books, or and I might do some paint or this and that. What I'm hearing is that 
I am channeling both sides of my brain. I'm getting some left brain activity and I'm getting some right brain. Indeed. Is that is that am I am I reading that right? That's exactly what it is. That's what the books are for to appease the left brain, the logical side. Mm-hmm. So you, you're on full, you're on all cylinders, because right brain is just open to just create without that blockade, that block. Mm-hmm. You know? So yeah, mm-hmm. go straight to the subconscious. You know, the doubting Thomas. You know, uh, that mm-hmm. left brain, that that conscious mind that blocks the subconscious. Bro, Penny talk about it all the time. You know, so you. Whenever you appease it with these books, that doubting time is that left brain, then the information in dealing in this kind of taboo, kind of abstract, not so spoken upon all the time information, it could penetrate to the subconscious without that blockade in place, you know. So you got to be open-minded. You got to be open-minded, not like concrete, but more like soil, because mm. you know, uh, you know, concrete is actually foreign to us. We come from soil. Mm-hmm. You know, just in terms of you know how we how we've always gotten down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to share from any of your experiences? And uh, I see the caller with your hand up. We're gonna open up the lines here in a little bit um, shortly. But is there anything else that you want to expound on from your experience, anything you want to share just, you know, in regard to your, your, your ritual work your or anything dealing with your cult revelations, whatever? Um, yeah, just uh, last thing on, on what you asked me. The last question is that in, like, Nigeria, Ifa, you have Isu, Ishu, and uh, mm-hmm. Brazilian Kumbanda, you have Exu. So that's the red color frequency, the root chakra. That's the child. So when they talk about what you were talking about earlier, paraphrasing, you know, coming child as a child in order to enter into the gates of heaven is uh, that same concept in the, they say, the gateway when it comes to, let's say, an Ifa, Isu, Ishu, come as the child, that is the black child, that is the African child. And children coming from, let's say, the soul concept, coming from that place, and before all the mundane programming goes in, they're what we would say more pure in thought without all that muck. Right. So spirit can, can deliver the message more thoroughly, you know, before all of the, we put all the training into the children, you know, so going back into that mindset and doing magic is where one can communicate clearly with these concepts, our ancestors that transitioned and these deity concepts, these spirit concepts, you know, for our balance while we're down here putting in work. Yeah. Right on, right on. Well, the people want to know, uh, you got any lectures coming up? Uh, <laughs> or you got any? Oh, uh, oh, you, oh, you, oh, you, oh, you, oh, you, oh, you ask me. Um, uh, yeah. Nah, man, nah, man, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not a, I'm not a teacher, man, you know, and that, you know, I just... I just uh, freestyle, man. You know, I'm just, uh, you know, just in the art, man. I just like art, you know. So that's why I'm here, you know. And and you know, to to we chop anyway. So this is just a, a public, what we do in private. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. Right. Right. No doubt. Yeah. That sometimes be the best ones when it just that's that's really what I was, you know. Shooting for the night, which I think that's what we got. You know, a window into a a phone bill session. You know, because I bill with Blackwater, I bill with you, bill with you know, bill with Gino, and 
and uh, sisters up here, you know, in Dallas. Um, so, yeah, man, I, I, I appreciate you coming on. Dropping some knowledge. Too, you got anything else you, you, you want to you wanna add before we move on? Man, just, you know, appreciate it to, you know, Dr. Eileen Bay, you know, uh, Brother Blackwater no and Q Brother Jamal, you know, just shit, appreciate, appreciate, you know, just, uh, just really the knock. You know. No doubt. You, you still there? You kind of broke up there at the end. Oh, uh, yeah, I was just saying, I just appreciate the knowledge, man. You know, so for uh, sure, uh, uh, shit, and I appreciate our bills. You know, so it's you know uh, when I talk to my fam, you know, and we're talking about health. You know, I bring I bring you up often. You know, and you know you being cold. You know, when it comes to that, you know that that aspect, and you know with what's going on with some of my close family. You know, um, you know that knowledge is is really uh you know, something that we need, you know, when we're being active in, in situations. Mm-hmm. So, just appreciate it, man. No yeah. doubt. I think what we got going here, we are actually in just low key, no pun intended, you know, we are um we're actually building a university, you know, and it's 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 it's, it's it's peace the way it is because it's, um, it's organic. You know what I'm saying? It's organic the way this thing just unfolds. Because, you know, it's, what I was trying to demonstrate here tonight is that you see different modalities come together. And that is really the original template of a university, you know, conveying a universal science that can – Show itself in multiple ways, which is which is Allah, ninety nine names of Allah, you know, um, meaning that this one, this one uh, infinite source can express itself, you know, in infinite ways. So I mean, I think we did, I think we've done, um, at least a good initial start up to displaying at the night. This this was this is on point, you know. Um, but I just got a couple things not gonna be on the level of what y'all don't want in on, but just some simple stuff I thought about. And uh, Blackwater, I got you open in case you have any comments. Got y'all's lines open. Um, but and uh, and caller, I see you three one zero. We're coming to you. But just something I was just thinking about this week, just some real simple stuff. And I just call this practical magic. Some things that maybe that um, someone who's, because, you know, we're talking about people who've been, uh, each of us have been into what we're doing at least for a few years now, at least five years each of us, minimum. So I want to... Uh, Give some practical, simple stuff for people. Because every like this, Blackwater made a great point. He said, magic is used all the time. And it's consciousness to me, part of being conscious is being aware of your magic and the miracles that are happening all around you. Therefore, you then gain power. So here's some practical stuff I was thinking about. Make your bed every day. And that might sound super mundane. Make your bed up every day. Because if you had a fucked up day yesterday and you go and sleep in this bed and then you wake up with the bed still all tore up, in essence, you are carrying over the energy from yesterday into today. And when you get up in the morning and you make up your bed, you are now closing off 
whatever happened yesterday, good or bad, and you are cleaning the slate and you got a fresh start for the day. You know, how many people we know who got a felony or several felonies, you know, or got some type of illness or some issue to where they just like, man, if I could just get a clean slate, you know, uh, so we are, that's a way of initiating that um, when you just make up your bed every day. Clean and organize your house and your vehicle. Clean and organize your house and your vehicle because your house is reflective of your mind. Anywhere you see house, temple, uh, the meeting place, you'll find these in the Bible. You'll find uh, the storehouse, um, the cave. Those always mean one or two, one of two things or both. You're either talking about the womb, the feminine womb, or you're talking about the mind, which the womb and the mind are synonymous, the sanctuary, the church, so when you are going through the act of organizing your house, it's an external ritual reflecting the organization of your mind. Also organizing your vehicle is an external representation of the organization of your mind. Physical exercise. What you heard these brothers talk about here tonight has been the manipulation of energy. And we've also talked about balance. So you can't be so heavy-handed on the side of, um, you know, I'm dealing with my spiritual work, I'm dealing with my mental work, and so forth, you know, and completely neglect your physical aspect of your nature. Because if it was not relevant and important, there would have been no need for you to come and inhabit a human body. So when you're doing your physical exercise, you are maneuvering and moving energy. Like Brother Blackwater said, you're also maneuvering the breath. Fasting. Even if it ain't nothing but two days or three days, it's another ritual that you can do that's actually a magical ritual. You even take the uh, if you just look at the word Ramadan in Islam, which Ramadan is coming up at the end of this month, just really look at the word Ra Ma Dan or Dan. Dan means judge. Daniel, judge. Ra, son, mother. So that you're talking about balance. If you're judging, you're supposed to deliver balance. Because you are mediating and you're looking at both sides. So you're judging between the masculine and the feminine. You're talking about balance. So fasting is a way to hit your reset and achieve some form of balance. Sex, intercourse, is very fucking magical. Very, very magical. Once again, You're talking about the combination of two opposing forces. And if they say um, the man and that woman um, have their minds locked onto um, a set agenda, a set goal, a set frequency, what did Blackwater say earlier? He said, let me find my note. He said, mantra plus meditation. He said, um, visualization plus vibration. What are you doing when you have sex? Is that not vibration? So, as again, like Kristen said, this is nothing new under the sun. You heard all the teachers, all the, 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 the masters talk about this. Visualization and then vibration or activation. 
It ain't the, it, it it does work. Now here's one. Some super conscious people might not align with, but keep your minds open. I'm going to use the word incantation over the over your food before eating. Now a lot of us, once we if we've come from a Christian background, once we you know, became super conscious and left all of that, it was, you know, I ain't doing, you know, saying no prayers or none of that over my food because I'm I'm a god now and all that shit. Let me tell you, on a scientific level, this is straight metaphysics, when you speak, it is a vibration. It is a vibration. You you if you can go and look up oh, I can't remember the the, the, the um Japanese man, it's um, uh, I got his book. But he talks about he did a lot of work with, with water and he talked to he, he would film or uh, he would photograph crystals of water and then he would photograph it after certain music was played or after a prayer was said over the water or an incantation or a mantra and he showed how these perfect geometric structures were formed in the crystallization of each water molecule from the energy of the vibration of the speech or the music. So if it works for water, it's going to work for your food because everything is energy. So a magical thing you can do is to speak over your food. You ain't got to pray, be praying to Jesus and praying to whoever just to speak. Something simple. Make up whatever you want to make up. I am nourished by this food. This food is going to uh, will nourish my body. It is clean. I am, you know, whatever. You know, that's power because you are the magician. Final thing, positive affirmations. It's called circular language. It's another thing harkening back to what Brother Blackwater was saying. Circular language. Instead of saying... I am healed, just say healing. Instead of saying I have money, say abundance. Because in the English language, what happens is everything is objectified. And once you say I and I is separated from from abundance, then that means you and abundance are two separate entities. Once you say I am abundant, you are, have separated yourself because I is the subject and abundance is the object of the sentence. So, so that you and what you desire must become one. So you, you, you don't exist anymore, and that which you are desiring does not exist as a separate entity. You are one with it. So if it is abundance that you want, you just say abundance. If it is wellness, you just say wellness. If it is healing, you just say healing. So those are seven things, quick things you can, I call this practical, this is our version of practical magic. You know, magic is not something that is beyond you. It is not something that's super spooktified, and it's not something that's complicated either. You know, you don't have to be a guru or have some five-star education and whatever modality, really it starts with knowledge of yourself and the knowledge of yourself then provides confidence in yourself. The confidence in yourself then leads to practice. You have to know, you have to trust yourself or have confidence in yourself, and then you have to do. You can't, you know, you can't do just all of the talking you have to actually implement some of these things. And it's a lot of times where people don't even know you do it. You do it quietly, and you do these things consistently so that you can see for yourself that they, it actually does work. This shit is real. Like I said earlier, it's the only real thing that there is. We live in a world of personalities. The word personality just means mad. So when we're talking about getting into our magic, we are actually talking about basically just dealing with the science of knowing yourself, trusting yourself, and activating what's in you. 
So that's all I got. I think it was a beautiful deal tonight. I appreciate um, Black Water, the Meta Magician, one for allowing me to sit in tonight. Um, Dr. Eileen L. Bay, Goddess Kadira, for sharing their platform, their overall platform to all of us. To Brother Krishna for coming in and dropping jewels on us. To the young brother Trey coming in and and sharing his craft with us. And I appreciate y'all y'all for listening in. You know, the phone lines are open real quick. We'll take a couple of quick comments or quick questions before we get out of here. Um, 310, if you're still here, if you've been waiting, yes, your sir. line's open. Yes, sir. All right, so let me go ahead and pass it. So, Brother Loki. Krishna been on there and uh, yeah, told me about this. There's a couple of points I want to make. I'm that too, right? Okay, slip double. But um, okay, when you said how do you stay sane knowing that this is fake, and like the brother saying, knowing that you're in a fight, you feel me? Because well, we don't we say we know my art, but we don't know how to apply my art. Applying my art is yeah, we seek peace, but we gotta also seek war with peace. So that that's when I come up with the mm-hmm. phrase war for peace. So when we start to fight for our peace, then we have to then at the same time we develop a strategy to protect it, right? And uh, now I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna go fast. Uh, you also you said that we are building a university. So if you ask me, mm-hmm. brother, I believe that's the wrong step to take to try to build a university when we could build a culture, because a culture itself could become universal, and that's what the United States is trying to push a culture throughout the universe and throughout the world. So when they, when you start to follow a certain person's way of life, for us, us speaking English, speaking a slave language, and we perpetuating it to our children, and we learning within that English, so we then enhance the culture. You feel me? It's the same thing. So when we build a culture and when we start to integrate knowledge and education into the way we raise our children, then we don't need their schools, right? Um, also, how you well, doing? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, Go ahead. Let, Go me, ahead. let, me, let me pause ahead. you right there. Go ahead. When I say university, you think I'm talking about University of Texas? No, I'm sorry. talking about no, sir. Uh, Texas no, Tech. Sir. What do you think I mean when I say university? I thought you, I thought you meant like a certain way of uh, – I thought I kind of still thought it meant in the, in the form, form of university, but not necessarily their university. No, no, no. Let me explain. The word uni is okay. one. Mm-hmm. Culture means behavior. So sometimes okay. we get twisted up on semantics. We're saying the same thing. We're just using different words. If you're going to build a culture, then that means you're going to build a shared behavior. A gotcha. shared behavior, it leads to a uni vision and a university, meaning a oneness. All so right. I'm talking about you got brothers on here who are masters of whatever modality that they participate in. I'm not talking about no Texas Tech. I'm talking about utilizing the energy of these gods who are right here in our midst and forming like Voltron. That's what I mean by university. Facts. I got you. So, so that and we, I, have, I didn't, so I never heard of We know we like clear. That. We both speak in the same language. But go ahead. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, well, I'll skip past the altar because just that, just by that understanding, come from university. Then you, hell, you pretty much build your altar because the when building an altar like a certain way. It's just if you build it this way and I build it this way, then our energies, and that goes into um, us building groups because the manipulation of energy works better between both people. And especially when you get three or more, it creates a vortex of energy to where people will start to believe it. It right. creates like a crowd type effect. Um, so when if all of us start building an altar the wrong way, then everybody will start doing it the wrong way, and the wrong way will become the right way. So that's all about that. And um, fasting. Back into war because I look at everything from a war perspective. Fasting is also preparation for war. Because um, when you start to fast, in in let's say the United States right now, it economic collapse and it, it erupts. It's going to erupt because when a dollar fall, it's going to have that. Where do food come from? Everybody that say they vegan now would be, would turn cannibalistic. But so if we don't fast, if we don't practice not eating, when we forced to not eat. We may act irrational and even turn on our uh, turn on our own. Then sharing and then the animal instinct, like when you were speaking on animal instinct, come back in the humanistic nature, uh, a kick in to where 
survival of self, uh, like rank supreme and become the rule of law. You know, um, mm-hmm. man, but it's so much. I was just trying. I know you got other callers, so I was just trying to throw that all in. But man, but yeah, uh, I love these bills. Uh, power to the people, African or nothing, black power banging, and we're going to keep this thing moving. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, no next, doubt. I got to get in on all these, <laughs> all these, because it's going nothing but down. And I love the way we build it. But one thing right now, the conscious community, one thing I feel about the conscious community is that, yeah, we're waking everybody up. But after they wake up out and get up out of their bed, if we don't have nothing for them to do, then they become stagnant and they become a worse, they become it become a pool, a cesspool of in, in knowledge, and we are either we are destroy ourselves way faster by being conscious, having knowledge, and we are poison the pool of knowledge. And I really do feel like that's what's happening now because we're not we're not active. There's too many kings and queens. The same thing that got us in this position is going to get us out of this position. We slavery got us here, but slavery is going to get us out. We have to become slaves to the movement. And what I mean by becoming slaves to our movement is that we're not going to get no kudos, and we're not about to get paid. You do this shit for free, and that's the problem. We got too many kings and queens, all these booze, bad, these black and bougie niggas. You know, we need to get out of that. We need to get back to our rag and then that children are our riches. And if we don't get back to true culture and get back to earth, because earth is one thing that I don't care if you more Hebrew Israelite, uh, RBG, whatever. If we all go back to Earth, Earth is going to set us all on the same time. It's going to set us all at the same speed. That's why our war should be directed at things like Walmart. We could we could war against Walmart produce out, and we could war against their produce by growing our own produce, which saying that we're not going to buy their produce. So when we grow and, and we use the land that we already have, we don't need to go conquer land. If we got a backyard, use that. You got a patio, use that. You, it's a, it's a uh, vacant house across the street. Fuck it. Go dig it up. Use that. And uh, another thing, another thing, um, one thing that we might have to start doing, we have to start sending people into learning trauma and sending up, um, sewing up bullet wounds and fixing teeth because we're going to have to do this in a garage pretty soon. It's coming to where you're going to have to go to the garage, the neighbor's garage, to get your bullet wound sewed up. That is coming. You see the way they're doing this all around. So the United States is broke. And the more it retracts, mm-hmm. the less people are going to get taken care of. And if we don't have it set in place, we can take care of ourselves. We're going to be dying from just infections like gangrene, a little cut on the gate. We can no longer depend on them. We have to depend on ourselves. So these things we have to start right. doing it now. And a couple of good books to get um, where there is no doctor, where there is no dentist, uh, Patriot is a good book. Uh, a European lady um, told me about that one. You feel me? So, man, mm-hmm. we got so many strategies, and a lot of it is best uh, talked in person. But the stuff I put on YouTube, I'm just putting out here now. I got a garden in my backyard. Rabbits breed within 30 days. They have babies, six months. They babies that have more babies. If you don't eat meat, that's cool, but they high in protein, but you would suffer from fat starvation. But their feces could go straight to the plants without burning them. Uh, it's just we have to create life cycles in our backyard and within our realm. We have to become producers, and we need an active community. Active community is the next step after conscience. So, sure, we know, but if we're not doing nothing, then we only become niggas and bitches that read books. You feel me? So if we just be a step above mm. the niggas and we read books, then be a step above that is to apply the knowledge. We're not applying it. And that's one of the problems. My last point is Christopher Columbus set out in a Nina, the Penta, and the Santa Maria and went to go to new lands. Why us as black folks can't set out in the Regal, the Cutlass, and the Monte Carlos and go somewhere else where they don't have a city and build one? We so damn conscious. Well, we need to go and start building cities. And we could start from city building by going to our backyards and knowing ourselves that we can do it without grocery stores so we could build our own. But if we're not doing that, then we're not ready. If we don't start to cluster as conscious folks, we're going to be even be we're going to be dismantled by our own and by outside forces. So the conscious people need conscious neighbors. If your neighbor is not conscious, you're going to lose this, you're going to lose in battle. So you're basically in a desert, and your house is an oasis. And however far I got to walk to get to you is how far I got to go without water to be able I could come and get consciously fed. So these are the things that we got to start implementing strategically. 
and we got to also um, get maps and re- redraw the lines on the maps. But that's something different. That's re- reapplying the energy to Earth. But uh, we get into that later. But yeah, I'm right gonna on, hold right y'all on. up. You know what I mean? Because I do this shit all night. Me and Low Key be on. We go farmers for this. Uh huh. I feel you. I feel you. Well, either way, you know, good jewels for the people. You know, food, food for thought, food for action. And um, you know, um, it's 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 a lot. Everybody got their role to to play. You know, it's it's uh it's a huge production here. Yes, sir. Everybody gotta gotta get in. You know the. The tight end got to be tight end. The guard and the tackle got to do their job. You know, the linebacker, everybody got their role. So, um, uh, like we say in chaos mathematics, there is no truth. All is permitted. So, once again, brother, I appreciate you tuning in and listening in and dropping some jewels for the people. And, Sometimes uh, roles got to be assigned, brother. That's what the Japanese did and how they built back up to where he was after the war. They started assigning people roles. This is what you're going to do. Right on. Right on. All right, good, brother. We gonna, I'm going to wrap this thing up and get into some family time here. But I'm going to say peace and power to everybody. Thank y'all for listening in. It's been a beautiful build this evening. You know, um, mastersofthecosmos.com. Get over there and take a look. Check it out. You can get you a free membership. Join the Inner Sanctum so you can be in the loop on... um, some of this information that's coming across the wire. Let's see, brother. Brother Krishna, got you open. You had one more? Well, yeah, one more thing I wanted to say. I wanted to, uh, you know, definitely show love to Sister Purplest and, oh, no you know, doubt. the big homie. And the big homie called Black, you know, two people who, you know, get people on the line. They, they, they let people know about the show and, um, you know, put, make that sacrifice, put that time and energy to it. Good people, you know, with good hearts, man. I just want to say, I appreciate it. Black got, um, verbal pig radio podcast, you know, on YouTube. So, you know, y'all check the, the brother out, you know, he good brother. And, uh, he coming with some knowledge. So just wanted to say that. Right on. Right on, no doubt. Much appreciated. I'm subscribed to the channel. Everybody get over to Cold Black, C O L B L A K, right? B L A C. B L A C. Look the brother up on YouTube. Dealing with a lot of pertinent issues that, that's facing us right now. Um, just like the just like the the homie here from, from Cali was going in. Um, so definitely go over and, and subscribe to the channel. And yeah, I echo that. Much thanks to um, Sister Purpose um, for being the web connecting. Also, the Sister Zeta um, and to the, the brother Cold Black and to the whole Houston, the whole Houston Connect down there. You know, brother Gino, brother Krishna. You know, everybody, everybody forming this thing like Voltron. So, it's, uh, anything else, good brother? Before we close out. No, nah, that's it. Right on. Well, y'all know how we do. You know, we need you to stay down till you get up. And when you get up, stay down. It's brother Jamal. This has been Tips and Tricks Tuesday, and we're here on First World Order Radio. Peace and power. Yo, yo. Risen from the Mahapa, the reincarnation of Labib Mustafa, the king of the opera, subject of the saga. Globetrotter, soul spotter, stargazer Elohim, Shabaka, stone praiser 
chalice to cup the grail. Tell the stories of my glories from the depths of hell. Oh well, as the pages of my book turn, I burn like ether, ashes in the urn. Sprinkle me, I return as a freedom fighter, overstand the truth, write a lighter or the catalyst. Maybe antagonist, mathematicist, take a geometric strategist, the builder, protractor, seeing panoramic views of animus, analyzing anarchists as the pianist puts melanin to scale. Inhale, tell me what you smell. This is one eye focusing through the gnosis. Meditate, levitate over primal oceans to medicate, educate over foolish notions. Now you overstand kings and queens and no quotient. Can divide you. I will find you. Depths of my soul. 